Hello everyone, welcome back to the shed. What we're going to be doing in this video is I am going to fit a brand new screen to replace the one which I removed. Uh, I think it was back in the very first video. Um, I've got a, got a brand new replacement, uh, so we're going to do that. And secondly, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace these uh, rear hangers. Now, this one's not so bad, but uh, it's actually the exhaust that's um, twisted slightly. But if you come around to this side, this hanger is bent out of all proportion. So um, I've got pair to replace them so yeah we're going to be doing that as well before we get on with that what i want to do is i just want to address something uh, from the previous video um, there was a funny noise from the fuel pump when uh, we turned the key on and i said it was uh, most likely air well as you can tell when i turn the key on now no noise at all and that's because i ran it obviously what it did was it bled the air out and that was all good so yeah let's uh, let's crack on with the job for today Okay, so um, I don't know if you can recall, but what I'll do, I'll put a picture up uh, now. So you can see what the original screen uh, was like. It had a corner broken off and there was a bit of like um, U-channel across the top, which left a little bit of uh, like a broken shard hanging down. So that was a, that was a genuine Suzuki screen. What I've done um, to replace it though, as I haven't gone for a genuine Suzuki one because they're actually stupid money. What I've done is I've bought a double bubble smoked one. Now this is from a Chinese seller um it, it took ages to come it took best part of a month as you can see it's even got chinese writing on the bag um so get rid of that and it's a double bubble and it looks like a decent decent bit of kit um, it's a bit rough around the edges around here uh i'll agree however you ain't gonna see that because it'll be behind the fairing but other than that it looks pretty pretty decent and uh yeah as i said it's a double bubble as well so it gives a bit of a uplift to the airflow because I'm uh, slightly taller than your average chap so that'll obviously be benefit beneficial to me um, but yeah it's gonna fit in there just like that I think the smoke color against the silver actually does look quite uh, quite nice so what I'm gonna do is um, to make my life easier is I'm gonna remove the inner trim because these walnuts are a right pig to get in and I, I'll never get them through um, both the, the hole in the fairing and the hole in the uh, screen um, without pulling them in from the other side. So that's what I'm going to do. So yeah, let's uh, let's crack on. I'll put this down and we'll start taking a few bits off. There's only a couple of screws holding this trim on anyway, so it's not uh, it's, it's nothing too uh, too taxing. Okay, so to get this in a trim off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop the screw out. Take this. A little panel off and then that screw goes through the fairing into this trim panel as well you see and then this screw just here that LED there is it's actually got a connection behind it I'll do I'll just pop it out look um, obviously this bike had an alarm at some point it doesn't have one now um, unless it's I don't, I don't even know. It's, it's possible that it was there as a deterrent or something like that. Who knows? Okay. So that's this side. What I'll need to do is the next side and then we'll be able to pull it off. Lastly, just whip the two top screws out on each side. These are only loosely fitted anyway. Right then, that's the trim ready to come off and just pop it out on each side just like so and there we go yeah it's a bit so a bit snap there might put a bit of put a little plastic well behind that and it'll probably be as good as new you can actually barely see the break so yeah that'll be all right um okay pop this to one side and then we'll have a look at the screen 
Right then, so now we've got all that out of the way, what we need to look at is the, uh, the walnuts themselves. Now, if I pull the screw out, what in effect we've got here is it's a rubber sleeve with a just a little brass insert inside. Now, what that's got to do is that's got to go through that hole, which you can see there's like a little raised put section, through the hole and through the screen, the hole in the screen as well. And what it does is it'll clamp them together and then you put the screw in tighten it down and what it will do it will swells it swells it up slightly don't know if you can see that's just swollen up if I undo it you'll see it retract and then that's uh, that's basically what holds them in place so to that end they're a right pig to get in so what I need to do is get the screen in place get all of these in and then uh, there's going to be a bit of uh, a bit of fisty cuffs and swear words, I think, to get these in because they are uh, they are a bit of a pig. So what I'll do, I'll start with the first one, um, and then I can swear at the, the last three um, off the camera, and I'll bring you back in once I've done it. So let me grab my screen, and we'll uh, we'll begin. Right then. So let's get the screen hole lined up. Let's get the walnut in. That's what I'll do best if we get it through the fairing first and here you can see it's already been a bugger the problem with a screwdriver is it's too easy to poke the screwdriver through the walnut and there we go that's the first part in and there it is sitting flush so what we've got to do is I've got to now get get it through the hole in the screen as well We're almost there. I can feel it's in. And there we go. Now if you look on the inside, you can see that the bulge is on the inside of the screen. So that's that one in. Now we'll get the screw in there and then that'll all be good. All I've got now is another three. So what I'll do, I'll get them all in and then I'll bring you back when we go and put the screws in. Okay, so I've got all four well nuts in. And what they do is this uh, this little bit here sits on the outside of the fairing, but there's nothing to stop. If I was to put pressure on that now, that would pop inside and then I'd have to start it all again. But what happens is, when you get the, uh, when you get the bolt in, it holds it in place and prevents it, prevents it from being pushed in. Prevents it from being, so I'm just putting a bit of, pressure behind it so otherwise if I had to put this bolt in it would have pushed in through the frame I, uh, I've got to be honest I'm not a fan of these walnuts so I find them really really annoying however on the flip side of that I can't think of a better way to do it because you want a nice rubber mount for your plastics and they're being held together in this fashion. Okay, what do I get them up to touch? I can feel it swelling in my fingers. For now, for now. To be fair, considering how cheap this screen was, all the holes lined up really, really well. Like I said, the only thing really I could pick up on was the was the edges around 
on a, a, around the side of the screen that are hidden behind the fairing anyway. That's the only real thing I could really pick up on it. So I think for the money, I think I paid. I think I want to. I want to say twenty-five pounds ninety-nine p. Um, I don't think it was any more than that. It was around about that sort of money. So twenty-five, twenty-six pounds. Yeah, twenty-five, twenty-six pounds, and that was delivered. So I think all said, it's a pretty good deal. And there we go. That is them all done. Right. Next thing I need to do is get the trim back in, and then uh, these top uh, these top screws can go in. Uh, yep, yeah, they're lining up okay. That one not so much, to be fair. That one's not lining up quite as well. But yeah, they'll actually. Yeah, they'll be all right. They will. It take a little bit of gentle persuasion, but they'll uh, they'll go in. Okay, let's get the uh, let's get the trim in. Right then, this is back in the way it came out. It kind of came out like that and rolled, and rolled out. goes on the inside and then there's a few tabs all the way around and we've got to line up in order to get it back in its correct place on both sides So what I was saying before about it being a perfect fit is not necessarily true because that screen one is ever so slightly off from both of the other ones and if anything I'd say it's not the right size at all. So, if you look here, that is supposed to fit inside that hole. So the hole on the original screen would have been larger. Now, I don't think I've still got the original screen. I think I actually threw it away because it was, uh, because it was useless. Yeah, fairly confident I threw it away. So, looking at this, these need opening up. So what I'll do, I'll do that with a die grinder later. Um, but again, going back to what I was saying, <laughs> Um, I was commending the quality of this, but now I've uh, realised one of the pitfalls of buying a cheap Chinese screen. So I do need to open these up. I'll do it with a die grinder. I'm not going to do that now. I'll do that later. Anyway, so I'll put that to bed for the moment and uh, um, worry about that later. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the uh, rear foot picks. Right then, after the disappointment with the screen, what I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to these rear pegs. Now these should be uh, these should be pretty um, straightforward to replace. As you can see, I've got um, I've got a pair here in uh, fairly decent condition. Uh, in fact, in far better nick than these ones. Now these two I actually imported from the states because it was cheaper for some reason to buy them from the states than it was to buy them from a UK seller. UK sellers wanted about 30 quid each. The, the guy I got them from in the States wanted 35 pounds for the pair delivered. Absolute lunacy. Um, so yeah, so that's obviously what I did. Um, for some reason, people, uh, breakers in the UK seem to overprice um, things massively and I, I, I don't know the reasoning behind it. Um, greed, possibly, who knows, right. Anyway, what I need to do is 
remove the exhaust mount. First of all, it's just a mount and a bolt basically. Oh, just drop the spacer off the back. So what we have here, we've got this this weird little device with the slots in which slots neatly into the into the actual hanger itself. And then this that that'll probably polish out with a with a bit of effort. And then then you have a spacer. Then the hanger, then another spacer, then that fits on, and then the nut. And that's basically the order that we need to fit them back on. So, pull that down there until after we finished. Okay, now these, I've got a feeling might be a little bit corroded. Oh, no, they're okay, they're good. Bit of copper slip on it. So that is the pair of them removed. One thing that we have got in there is a little bushing that we'll need to transfer over. It's eccentric as well, so we can uh, raise and lower slightly where the, uh, where, the, where the bolt actually sits. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is bang these straight back on. No messing about. There's a little bit of corrosion here. What I'll do later on with this bike uh, in the future, if I do decide to uh, go down the avenue of completely stripping it and maybe powder coating stuff, then that will get the same treatment. Um, but until then, I can live with it. This is steel, the subframe itself is steel. Hence the corrosion, or hence the rust, should I say. Right then, what I'm going to do is get a little bit of grease inside the uh, pivot for that. But yeah, it's sitting nice. Okay, now these are pretty disgusting. I do have some of this exhaust wrap, this um, rubber stuff. I'm not sure if I've got the, anything this thin. I think mine's a bit thicker than this. What I'll do, I'll go and grab it out and have a look. If he can make it work, we'll make it work, won't we? Okay, I've got some exhaust uh, hanger rubber and it is too wide. However, what it does do is it sits quite nicely down the, you know, the hanger itself sits quite nicely down the center of it. So I think what I'll do is I'll actually get away with it because it'll, it'll still look quite normal. It just means that the edges aren't tucked over. So, you know, it's not, tucked in like so it's actually sitting like that but I think that'll be fine um, so what I'll do I'm gonna cut a couple of lengths of this stuff obviously one for each side this stuff isn't expensive I think it's about four or five quid for a couple of meters up to three meters. Okay, there. Okay, and then that's more than enough for for the other side. Step out there, out of the way. Okay, so. I have given that a good clean because it was absolutely bogging. Right then, what I want to do is make sure I get it in the right orientation. So yeah, it's going that way round. Uh, as you can see, it's got a different angle to it. 
from each side. And then I'm going to pop this rubber in. Just like so. The difference is what I like to do. For some reason, people put the ends so that it sits right underneath. But I think I find that a bit odd because it would make more sense to have the end at the back of the exhaust where it can't be seen. So that's what we'll be doing. I'll get that under there, like so. Let's get her up in the right place. And then what I'm going to do, give these a quick clean before we put them back together. All the bits and pieces. I should have done this off a of camera. You didn't need to see me cleaning these bits, did you? Now, the exhausts themselves are actually quite hammered. I've got a little bit of a plan on how to rectify that. Um, I'm not 100% sure if it's going to work, to be perfectly honest. Um, it may well not, and if it does, then I'll just buy new ones, but I'm going to give it a go and see if I can fix them myself first. Uh, and if it works out, it, uh, it will work out. Okay, so um, that one goes on that way. And then through the spacer. And then through the bush in the hanger, making sure that that's in the right orientation, like so, and then apart from a bit of pressure, get the other spacer on the other side. Right. And then tighten it up. Okay, there we are. That's it all back together and um with some new some new hanger rubber on. I think it looks quite uh quite fetching. Um right yeah. As I said earlier, I do need to do something with these um, and I've got a bit of an idea something I want to do but uh, I'm not 100% sure it's going to work out but I'm going to give it a go anyway and if it doesn't work out then I'll buy new ones but until then I'll, uh, I'll run with what I've got. Okay what I'm going to do next is the other side but obviously you don't need to watch me do that again. That scuff I'll uh, probably polish out. Okay yeah so anyway that is the end of this video. Um, I'll uh, get this one on. Um, you don't need to see me do it but uh, yeah anyway guys thanks for uh, thanks for stopping by. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll uh, see you all again for the next one. Thanks very much. Bye bye now. On reflection, and have to do after uh, doing the other side, I did realise that this was actually um, not put together correctly. So I pulled it apart, and it's now in this this configuration with this spacer, which is actually slotted to accept this hanger in between it. So that is how it is on uh, on both sides now, and. It does actually clamp the exhaust quite nicely and we've, even though the uh, the rubber is too thick I actually think it's come out okay. So anyway yeah um, as I said before guys thanks for watching see you all again in the next one.